Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. And in this video, I want to speak to you guys about the upcoming balance changes for the weapons. If you guys saw my last video, then I mentioned that alongside all the upcoming content, like Devil Joe, the spring update, the new weapons, etc., there will also be some balance changes for the weapons. However, I said in that video that I would be doing a separate video for that since there's quite a lot of stuff to talk about. So that is exactly what we're doing here. Of course, if you do enjoy this, you do find it helpful, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. Also, if you guys haven't seen the last video that I uploaded, then I broke down all the information from the live stream. So if you missed anything or you were at work, then I've linked that down below for you guys to catch up. Now, first up, we're going to start off by talking about the Great Sword. I'm just going to let you guys look at the images they had during the live stream. We don't have any accompanying gameplay just yet. Once the update does go live, I will dive into the training room and try and give you guys a slightly more accurate representation as to how these changes translate in game. But for the time being, this is what we have to go on. So for the Great Sword, the main focus here is to increase the damage for the first two charge slashes. As you guys know, if you've used the Great Sword or you've seen my Great Sword tutorial, the main way you play the weapon right now, typically, it's not the only way to use it, but typically you try to get to true charge slash as quickly as possible. And the main reason for that is because it is so powerful. It is more powerful than the first two hits combined. So as a result, you tend to either skip the first two hits completely via tackle or other means, or you just let the first two hits out incredibly fast without charging them and then get to the true charge slash. That is basically how you do a lot of your damage. And, you know, based on the way the game works now, that's fine. However, they clearly want to try and make people use the first two charge slashes as well to try and give you more options. So what they're doing is when you bear in mind that you charge a greatsword, it goes one, two, three. So during the second and third charges for the charge slash and the strong charge slash, those are the first two hits, they are increasing the damage. Now, of course, they haven't said here by how much. So once we dive into the training room, it'll be interesting to see whether the true charge slash is still more powerful than those first two hits or whether it's slightly more in line. But either way, the idea behind this now means there's more value in using those first two hits in addition to your true charge slash. So it'll more than likely allow for a slightly different greatsword playstyle. Instead of trying to make you rush to the final hit, you can then take more advantage of the first two hits. And then if you're given a big enough opening, that's when you can likely dip into true charge slash. Again, we'll find that out once we dive into the training room but that is essentially what it does. So it might well mean if you guys used Greatsword in previous games and you were more used to, say, those crit draw playstyles, then this might well bring about their return because there might actually be a lot more value in that. Moving on from there to speak about the Longsword, the main focus here is the Foresight Slash. They're making improvements to the timing and the hitbox detection. So first up, the time window to successfully trigger the Foresight Slash has been increased. So hopefully that means that if you pull it off and then there's a bigger window for the monster to hit you and in turn allow you to then follow up into the Roundhouse Slash and level up your gauge. On top of that, the hitbox to successfully trigger it has been increased, as has the damage hitbox. And also they've increased the angle that the player can control that direction of the attack. Again, we need to dive in and find out exactly how that works. But given that you can change your direction during a foresight slash, I imagine this will give you a little bit more control. On top of that, the Spirit Helm Breaker. Apparently there was a bug where you were supposed to be invulnerable during the rising and the falling part of that attack. You're not supposed to be able to get knocked out of it. So they fixed that now so that you'll be properly immune two knockbacks until you land on the ground, which is pretty cool given that you have to sacrifice a level of your gauge in order to pull this off. Then it was kind of frustrating where sometimes you launch into the air and before you can land it, you get knocked out. So this way you'll be immune until you hit the ground. Moving on from there to speak about the sword and shield. Main focus here is the round slash and also your slinger usability. Firstly, they're increasing the damage of the round slash. Now that is the final hit of the circle combo. So when you press circle, 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 it ends in a round slash, which has typically been the most powerful hit or still is one of the most powerful hits of your bread and butter sword and shield combo. Typically you skip the final hit of the triangle combo, go straight into the circle and it ends in the more powerful roundhouse slash, which then gives you the ability to roll out and continue the combo. However, if you guys have seen any sword and shield speed runs, you'll know that typically the focus or the way they play it is largely just to do jump attacks and then go and do a shield slam. That's how people are putting out most of their damage. So it'll be interesting to see following this, whether the roundhouse slash puts some more variety into that gameplay style and then gives you slightly more options in combat. But also on the slinger usability front, you will now be able to use wedge beetles with your weapon drawn. So up until now, the sword and shield can use 99% of slinger functionality with the weapon drawn as well as consuming items. So you can fire at things like dragon pods, flash bombs, knives, things like that. But well, the one thing you can't do is hook onto wedge beetles without putting your weapon away. So following this update, you'll then be able to do that, meaning you will have complete slinger functionality with your weapon drawn. 
As for the hammer, they are adjusting the stun values on the charged attacks. So charge tier 2, that is when you hold it down and you get to the second pulse. The charged upswing, that's the one where you basically slide forward and you swing upwards. It's good for sniping the head. I mentioned this in my tutorial. It's a really good move for covering some distance and basically hitting the underside of a monster's head. They've increased the stun value on that attack. They've also increased the stun value of the charged brutal upswing, which is basically that same move. But if you have the power charge active... And charge tier 3, this is the final attack where you of course hold down your charge to max level and then standing still, you let it out in what is known as the charged big bang. Now this is a move that in my tutorial I mentioned that damage wise it didn't have as much value as say big bang or just one of your core standard combos where you can go from the standard swing into your golf swing combo. So by increasing the stun value on this, it will now become one of your core stun attacks. You will essentially lean into your charge attacks to stun and KO and then once they're down, you can then dip into your pre-existing damage focused combos. As for the hunting horn, this is like a general attack power increase. When you encore the self-improvement melody, that's basically your bog standard hunting horn move that applies to you. It's the one that improves your movement speed. If you encore that, you will also get a flat attack increase and also a deflected attack prevention bonus. So essentially that's minor knockback prevention and a little attack boost on top. Just meaning that, you know, again, hopefully trying to encourage people to use the hunting horn slightly more aggressively and not just feel like it's a weapon used in the corner, just playing tunes for your team. If you get a nice little attack boost for yourself on top when you're doing self-improvement, then that's pretty nice. It'll also then be interesting to see what else this stacks with, but for the time being, that's just a general nice improvement for hunting horn users, given that that is a song you play basically at the start of your hunt. As for the gun lance, they're reducing the sharpness loss for shelling and they've made some attack power increases. So this is really cool. Shelling, the damage parameters have been increased when your sharpness is in yellow or worse. So basically, if you guys have seen my tutorial again for the gun lance, you'll know that I mentioned if you're using normal type gun lances and you use the sort of shelling playstyle where you basically slam your lance down, do full burst and then reload. This is great for damage, but it also rips through your sharpness. However, in this instance, they're making it so that the actual shelling attacks will do more damage when your sharpness is in yellow or worse. So essentially it's a kind of high risk, high reward thing. If you're going to be shelling, then you almost want to let yourself dip into low sharpness, which is something you don't typically do. So you can then get some more benefit out of your shell attacks. However, similarly, the sharpness loss will be much less for attacks like that. And also the worm state cannon and the wyvern fire attacks so it sort of balances out it then means that if you're shelling you won't be doing as much damage at the top end and it will take you a little bit longer to get to yellow or even slightly lower but it does mean that once you do get there your shell attacks will do a little bit more damage meanwhile your melee attacks will do less so it's kind of a high risk high reward if you spec towards shelling throwing artillery things like that then of course you can see the benefit from it but if you are using like a wide type or a long type gun lance this largely isn't going to affect you too much Worm State Cannon has also had the damage increased, and the Wyvern's Fire has also had its damage increased. So just a couple of moves you might want to consider using, and they'll do a little more damage than before. As for the Switch Axe, quite a few things to talk about here. So Zero Sum Discharge, they've adjusted it to make it easier to use. So this is of course the move that in-game is called your Element Discharge, but basically, first things first, this will give you level 4 earplugs during use. Now this is pretty useful, because I mentioned in my tutorial that if you use it, and you are in the amp state, and you latch onto the side of the monster, then a lot of the time if the monster roars you get knocked off which is kind of frustrating and you kind of begin to question whether you want to actually do that but if you have level 4 earplugs yes it's not maxed but it does mean that a lot of monster roars will not lock you off during that attack some of the bigger monsters of course still will but it just means that at least on the kind of slightly more general front that's pretty nice it's also now going to be possible to chain the beginning of the sword jumping element discharge into a zero sum discharge so that's going to give you like another combo path i may have to do a weapon workshop plus to semi update that given that i've just put out the switch axe weapon tutorial so there might be a few minor changes there so once this update goes live expect another video to fill in the gaps the zero sum discharge finisher has had its damage increased the mounted discharge finisher no longer causes sharpness loss and zero sum discharge this is a bug fix after use, you should now properly be immune to knockbacks until you land on the ground. So again, if you're doing the one where you're mounted and you explode, you fly backwards, you slam your sword onto the ground. At the moment you're falling through the sky, you're immune, but the second you land on the ground, then you return to the vulnerable state. So some pretty nice changes there, some damage increases, some earplugs, and also some general utility stuff. So definitely interested to see that in gameplay once it drops. As for the charge blade, also a few things here, some balance adjustments to impact file and element files. So first things first, attack power increases from effects other than that of the artillery skill for the explosions on the impact files were adjusted. Now again, they haven't given us actual details here, but the way they've worded it basically makes it sound like you can get some increase in your damage for your file explosions 
through skills other than just artillery. Right now, if you want to increase your file damage, you spec in artillery, and then things like attack boost and all those other moves, they basically just focus on the melee portion of your weapon. But by the sounds of things, they're going to broaden it so you can then get more value out of your file explosions. Now, considering that they're already pretty powerful, that's a rather interesting move, but I think it lines up nicely with what they're doing next. And the reason I say that is because they're making some changes to the elemental charge blades. We'll get to that in just a second. On top of that, the super amped element discharge, the stun values have been decreased for the impact files. So impact being the main type of charge blade that you use. The stun values have been decreased, so you won't get KOs quite so frequently, but of course it is still a very powerful move. However, the file stun values have been increased for all other attacks other than the axe super amped element discharge. So basically, if you are using your axe just normally and you're spinning around, you've got files and you're dishing out some file damage, or if you've charged your sword and you're using that, then the stun values on that are much greater, whereas the one from the super amped element discharge is lower. So I guess the idea behind that is to try and encourage people to use sword and shield and axe mode slightly more. And then if you just want to go in for a big finisher, that's when you dip into Super Amped Element Discharge. Of course, if you're just focused on damage and you don't really care about the stun, then it doesn't affect you too much. But if you are doing it for the KO, that's something to think about. On top of that, Elemental Values increased for all attack files. Now, bear in mind, some of this wording is a little bit off, but basically the idea behind this is they're trying to increase the potency of Elemental type charge blades, not just Impact, because Impact is typically the one you go to. So this will hopefully incentivize some slightly more broad use of these weapons as opposed to just kind of sticking to like the Diablos Tyrannus. And finally, to round that out, the Super Amped Element Discharge for the Element Type Files. The explosions are spaced close together, making it easier to hit. So if you've ever seen the Elemental Files, they spread quite wide. So often you kind of, you know, you'll hit with some of it, but not the whole thing. Whereas something like the Impact File just goes in a straight line. So this way, keeping it clumped slightly close together should helpfully allow you to get better value out of that. Moving on from there to the Insect Glaive, they've improved the effect of the attack power increase from the Red and White and Red, White and Orange Extracts. So basically just a flat attack increase, which is pretty handy. The extract effect times have been increased overall, so basically once you've gathered your extracts, then it's going to last you a little bit longer before you need to regather, and the effect times no longer decrease while you're mounting a monster. So if you've just gone around and you've just gone and gathered red, white, and orange, and then you've just suddenly procced a mount, then sometimes it's a little bit annoying because if you're on there for, you know, quite a few seconds, by the time you're jumping off, you're needing to regather. So now when you're mounted, the timers won't decrease. Moving on from there to the launch, just a quick one here, but the counter thrust. Following a successful counter thrust, you gain temporary knockback negation. And launch users typically get tripped quite a bit. So if you're able to land a successful counter thrust following a monster attack, then it gives you a nice little bit of knockback negation to then follow up with your next attack. As for the dual blades, they made the demon gauge easier to maintain. So for the demon gauge, it can now be increased by demon mode round slashes and the demon flurry rush. And for when you're in demon mode, they fixed a bug where you could not cancel demon mode when transitioning from a demon dodge. For the bow, there's mainly bug fixes on the bow front, so the dashing shot, they fixed a bug where the spread power shot skill was applied twice, which was increasing the damage on it, so they fixed that. And as for Dragon Piercer, I figured it was going to happen at some point, but basically if you guys have seen that tip where you can essentially unlock your Dragon Piercer, you can start firing it and you can look the other way and then snap your camera to fire it behind you, that has been fixed, so you can no longer do that in game. As for the bow guns, unfortunately there haven't been any changes made. Now this is a bit of a weird one, they said in the stream they feel like they're in a good place. I do still feel like the bow guns could do with some buffs here and there. I know they kind of got hit pretty hard after the slicing nerf, but I do feel like there's some more stuff to be addressed, especially with regards to some of the base ammo types. But unfortunately, based on the information we have right now, they have not been changed at all. So for the time being, that's pretty much it. Those are your weapon balance changes coming to Monster Hunter World with the Spring Update. As I mentioned, once they do hit the game, I will be sure to dive into the training room and try and give you guys a better visual indication as to what has changed. But until then, thank you for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.